Texas, where David Ferry picked them up, and they hid a, a, in Bancliffe, Texas, a few days, and then they were flown out of town to Mexico. Uh, Wall, Breck Wall, and Joe Peterson um, were contacted. I have the name of the contacts and how they got to the Adolphus Hotel. They were with, talked to Jack Ruby on the evening of the 23rd, and I have a list of people that Jack Ruby talked to, and that's the kind of schizoid paranoia the doctors pimps they're the most terrible kind push out this stuff in magazines called mental health that has no basis in fact john kennedy was shot from a fatal shot highly trained mexican professional assassins the fatal shot came from the side of the fence the one that blew his head it did involve tammy true i gave you the dates the men that took the marksman out of town where two of them were picked up and it involves a man named santana who was a Emilian Santana, who also had told Jim Garrison a lot of this information, stayed with Tammy True, worked with Jack Ruby, Clay Shaw, the CIA, through an organization called the Double Check Organization that was a cover for the CIA. All of this conspiracy began after World War II with Bill Stevenson of British intelligence, whose uh, operatives, along with our CIA, are behind the Patricia Hearst kidnapping. I'm just winding up my article now. Why was Patricia Hearst kidnapped? And like the Watergate story that was the first in the country uh, after their arrest to put down what I think is a definitive explanation of what the people were doing at the Watergate Hotel, naming uh, President Nixon, John Mitchell, Patrick Gray. The Hearst story that I'm doing begins at the Tyro Club in North Jamaica, where men like John Connolly and Paul Rogodorodsky and other people, John de Menil, meet in a northern Jamaica island at the Tyro Club on Motego Bay. And it is there where Stevens of British intelligence met with American intelligence and Reinhard Galen of Nazi intelligence to set up the CIA and eventually to spread terror and riots and unrest in America as an excuse for the eventual control of America. And they've been overthrowing the electoral process for a long time. Most of this came under the supervision of Defense Security Division of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, headed by Werner von Braun, the German Nazi rocket scientist. Uh, their address is 3990 East Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. And it's no wonder that our Attorney General William Saxby is saying last week, we have enough already, the nation can't stand another shock. Mr. Saxby comes from Ohio. Uh, he's known there. It, it's the state, not only of Kent State, but a lot of conspiratorial activities took place there. Gordon Novell of the CIA went to Ohio when Jim Garrison wanted to arrest him, and he stopped in Virginia first. He said, I'm CIA. He stayed in Ohio, and he was never extradited. The chain of command is coming down every week, and the operatives who are involved, they're surfacing, and that's important because that is the only way it is ever going to open up as these people speak. Even though David Ferry is dead and Ruby is dead and Oswald is dead, there's a link here between Carlos Prio Siqueiros, the former president of Cuba, and Sturgis, Frank Sturgis down in Miami, and Bernard Barker, the Bay of Pigs operation. And uh, the researchers are getting information from all over of how the pieces fit together, and there's still enough people alive willing to talk. So after 10 years... Uh, it, since the assassination of John Kennedy, um, the pieces are coming together every day, and I think it's important to keep up the interest with Congress and let them know that you want this thing open. The um, uh, news this week is that they may open up the Rosenberg case. They're opening up uh, the James Ray case. The Sirhan case is wide open. It has to be opened up. There's a wonderful book. We'll go into a little bit on the Watergate now and and mingle it back to what these people were doing in 1972 because it goes all the way back to 73. There is a book I might have mentioned on my shows before. If not, uh, I think you should get it. It's called Watergate Crime in the Suites, and it's written by Michael Meyerson. The address is 381 Park Avenue South, New York, 10016. Or you can write to KLRB if, if you missed this. And in our local community, the Thunderbird Bookstore has it. It's called Crime in the Suites, um, and it ha it's a very good analysis, a biography of people involved in the Watergate, and there's several sentences that here that are important. 
Uh, he says, if the government's personnel were changing quickly, the pace was exceeded by changes in the president's explanation of, the fair, of affairs. In September 1972, Richard Klein has pledged the most extensive, thorough, and comprehensive investigation since the investigation of the Kennedy assassination. Since opinion polls have found that barely a third of the country believes the official findings of that investigation, the Attorney General's announcement hardly put the nation at ease. Nixon then tried something better at a news conference, and he said the investigation of the Watergate was so complete and thorough they make the 1948 congressional investigation of Alger Hiss look like a Sunday school picnic, another assertion not really tailored to gain the public's confidence. And this book goes into the power of the United States, how corrupt it is, how a handful of people manage 94% of the planet's population and make them aliens, That how corrupt the U.S. business world is and their ethical standards and their standards of social relationships and the necessity for advertising men who are uh, dishonest and corrupt in Washington uh, running the White House and the necessity for war-related contracts, aircraft, oil, chemicals, electronics, and deprivation of um, problems in our country. He says, from its inception, our country has witnessed barbarism against the populace for the purpose of private accumulation of wealth. Black men and women kidnapped by the millions brought to our eastern shores to make cotton king of the southern economy. And he goes into the slavery and pushing the native Indians away from their home and hurting them up. And the Watergate is simply one extension of this gross mismanagement of life, just to push it against the wall, you know, to the breaking point. And that's what Watergate was about. He says that, that 72 is the most important year in gaining control of people because they're catching on to what's happening. And that was the gist of my articles, that they had to do um, control people with violence, with assassinations. They had to control the elections uh, by stealing the ballots, by manipulating the candidates, by drowning a girl, by shooting, paralyzing another candidate, and murdering a president, murdering a senator. And there's this desperation to manipulate people to maintain the oil or the energy or the labor in the hands of a few people and with cassettes and newspapers and radio programs and education um, the awareness is so high that this is the year where they had to appear not overtly fascistic but manipulate now or never and so they put 20 million dollars of secret money into the now because they never they don't want the never um, the Watergate affair, it's been two years, and what has happened? The judiciary uh, is dropping charges. They want to drop charges. I, they have a list of charges, and I have a list of things they're not going into. Uh, it's amazing. There's 56 charges, but just to list them on paper and then list what's happened with the arrest is so horrendous, the contrast of the slap on the wrist for what these people were doing, because one charge alone affects masses of population. And there's 56 charges, and they want to drop them just to 37. And the whole thing is that they'll get each person and offer them immunity, give them 30 days, 40 days, 60 days, suspended sentence, in order to say, oh, we'll go for the big one. And then the big one, like Nixon, will be like Agnew. He'll just take trips and walk around and be a millionaire. And they've let 125 people off to get Nixon when he'd be out in four years anyway and couldn't run for re-election. He's only got two more years to be out, and he's never going to prison so 125 people or more are getting off just on the excuse to get Nixon. Here are some of the charges in the last that have surfaced in the last year, um, and Jaworski does not intend to punish appropriately any single one of them. If you remember, he was a member of the team of the Warren Commission. One of the charges was the president's impounding of funds earmarked by Congress for domestic programs. Well, that just you know that implies education, old age, health clean air, um, prosecution of minority leaders, unemployment, impounding of funds these two year, whole two years that Congress worked to give to domestic programs. Now they're charged with the illegal bombing of Cambodia, done secretly. Um, and it goes into Admiral Moore, who became chief of staffs and was promoted, replaced last week, but the illegal bombing. Third possible involvement in the June 72 burglary of the Democratic headquarters and the cover-up. The possible involvement, the overthrow of the electoral process is what it was. It was using the CIA domestically, hiring violence, uh, making hotel reservations for provocateurs, 
There was forgery in those offices. There's no charge of forgery listed at all for any of these men copying letters and signatures, sending their names. Another charge was Nixon's personal finances at Key Biscayne in San Clemente. That was $17 million, uh, more than all presidents have made in salary since George Washington. He put into two homes, and the taxpayers paid for it. White House threats or promises of government favors in exchange for illegal corporate campaign contributions. Well, they've listed a few illegal campaign contributions, American Airlines, Minnesota Mining, Goodyear Tire, Interoceanic Corporation, Braniff Airways, Gulf Oil, Ashland Petroleum, Phillips Petroleum, Carnation Company, Diamond International, American Shipbuilding, Northrop, and Lee Valley. Well, all of these pleaded guilty. The corporations may be paid $3,000 fine, $5,000. What is a $5,000 fine to an airline that in exchange for putting the secret money for Richard Nixon raises the fares all over the country where transportation is prohibitive to large masses of population? The profit from the airlines and oil companies immediately after the election goes up, um, they they pay a fine of five thousand dollars and they make a million just by getting their president in. What kind of a slap is it on the wrist? And then the companies are charged. Uh, nobody in the office, the men, the head president of the companies, just get a thousand dollar fine, which is nothing from their pockets, not even a week's salary. So that there is uh, illegal corporate campaign contributions. Then the Environmental Protection Agency failure to prosecute anti pollution laws. Um, they're given a little slap on the wrist. Well, what about the rivers that are polluted? You can walk on it. What about the chemicals in the lakes? Seafood contamination, the loss of, of crab, of mussels, shrimps, lobster, all along the border, birds, wildlife, uh, all these things are being killed off. But this is just one of the charges that they, they didn't carry out their anti-pollution. Attempt to abolish the Office of Economic Opportunity. That's one of 56 charges. Thirteen top officers of the Office of Economic Opportunity are CIA. They're described in this book on the Watergate affair. The people that Richard Nixon appointed the Office of Economic Opportunity could be nothing but deprivation from far right-wing Nazis to and racists. How could they possibly care? Here's a list, for example, Howard Phillips, the head of the Office of Ep- Economic Opportunity. The chief inspector of that group is Eric Biddle, the ex-CIA agent who oversaw Two dozen inspectors, among them was Ray McConnell, a CIA intelligence analyst and investigator for the House Internal Security Committee, Peter Spaulding, Army Intelligence, involved in planning and coordinating CIA investigations and FBI, Uh, Early Morgan, formerly government supervisor in the field of counter-espionage and Army counterintelligence, Gerald Crawford, Army Intelligence, Rene Fransiki, 20-year man in Army Intelligence, this is the Office of Economic Opportunity. Thomas Fitzpatrick, formerly the San Francisco Police Red Squad. Robert Lindenbrandt, Chief Deputy Sheriff of Modoc County in California. That group, if it was for opportunity, it, it's hard to understand how minorities would get a fair chance, get fair lawyers. So everybody that appealed to them, they'd have a list of where your head was at, who were the act- activists. And after they abandoned this office, the Many people's paroles were denied because they had no lawyers. Many minority people are in jail. Uh, The jail population grows. It requires new jails, and uh, uh, those are new contracts, new guards. In other words, uh, the service that they were doing, and I have the statistics at home, were so fantastic, and you take away those services, and you build a new industry, which is prison guards and prison jails. So just the crime of abolishing the office doesn't describe maybe ten or 15,000 lives or 20,000 lives or more than that. That are families totally affected, husbands and fathers and young people, you know, growing up with no chance before the courts because there's no lawyer to represent them. There's another charge of Nixon's ordering combat troops to Cambodia without the Senate study or knowing it, how many lives are involved in that operation. Another charge is the investigation of the milk fund cases and the contributions in exchange for raising the price of milk. How many people are doing without milk? How, the milk charge case, the only one that was indicted or, or suggested in the indictment was Jake Jacobson in February 24th. He got indictment on one count of making a false statement to the grand jury, and he pleaded innocent, and the indictment was dismissed on technical grounds. That That's justice in America. Meanwhile, across the board, the milk profits have gone up, 
the price of raising uh, a family, the cost of living I read this week was $1,200 for four people in a family. Uh, milk is a basic uh, ingredient for health and ice cream products and cheese.